Hello friends and fans of EVGA, this is Ask EVGA episode 22, the show where you get to ask us questions that you have about PC gaming and EVGA hardware. Uh, let's launch right into our questions. Uh, the first one here comes from Angry Toast. He asks, will you ever make a 240mm hybrid kit, especially for the 2080 Ti as you did for the Kingpin? A lot of people in the EVGA forums want a better cooling solution other than paying for a custom loop. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I know personally I've not had any conversations with our engineering team about uh, bringing the 240 meter, uh, millimeter AIO uh, that we use on the Kingpin to other models. Um, it's definitely something that we can consider as long as there is you know, a market opportunity there uh, where people actually want to buy the card with the 240. Um, right now I kind of like the product differentiation between the Kingpin and the other models. I think that one only having the 240, especially with its really heavy overclocking focus, um, makes sense um, but certainly uh, if we look to future generation cards where we will cer almost certainly continue the hybrid cooling uh, format for some of our cards we can definitely look into that but uh, there to answer your question uh, no real plans at this time for a 240 millimeter AIO um, <clears throat> Uh, Toto asks, uh, hi Ray, following the latest Intel vulnerabilities, I was wondering what's EVGA's policy for BIOS updates? Uh, how long does EVGA provide BIOS updates for security bug fixes or any improvement? Um, well, I will say uh, for like those vulnerabilities, those big security ones, uh, we have been doing it back to about the X58 era so far. So it's about a decade. Um, and we think that's pretty good perf uh, performance as far as uh, our ability to go back in time and, you know, actually fix that stuff. Um, as far as like improvements to BIOS, things that add additional features, uh, we usually will only do that for the current generation stuff. It's rare that we, for example, would update an X99 motherboard for feature updates when the X299 is the current platform that Intel is using. So typically those type of feature improvements we will save for the latest stuff um, just because there's only so many resources that we have to develop that stuff. Um, but certainly the security stuff is very important. And so we do try to go back as far as we can. Um, we think we're doing pretty good on that, uh, relatively speaking. Um, the next question here is from Master Vex PC V123. Uh, he asked, did EVGA ever uh, think of making AMD uh, motherboards or AMD Ryzen boards? Uh, I myself run a Ryzen CPU and NVIDIA GPU. Probably a lot of people run something like that. Uh, builds look nicer when the main components from the same manufacturer also helps with RGB syncing. Uh, yes, on that uh, latter point, uh, you do have a good point there. The main components matching in the system and the RGB synchronizing is easier when it's all one manufacturer's unit. If it's all EVGA, uh, then LED sync works really nicely. Um, to answer the question of Ryzen boards, there are no plans. There's no plans that I've heard of, certainly. Um, we have not built AMD motherboards for a very, very long time, back when there were actually NVIDIA chipsets on some of them, um, but that's well over a decade ago now. Uh, so there's just uh, no real plans at this time. It is nice to see that AMD is in the CPU realm, uh, having more competition with Intel than they have in the past few generations, and I think that's always good for the consumer. Uh, but from our standpoint, we're pretty happy with the Intel products that we're bringing out and so there's nothing to announce on uh, any other front at this time um moving on hatchum 99 says why does the z370 ftw only support m.2 nvme and not m.2 m or b key uh typically on our boards now we're pushing more towards the pcie and the nvme support we see from customers that that's the real big demand uh is getting that pci express support for m.2 ssds in particular um right now those speeds are actually even being held up by the pci express uh standard being at version 3 and we're seeing as we, we go on to uh, version 4 in the future, uh, there will actually be higher bandwidth available to SSDs. So using something like SATA is uh, going to be a really heavy bottleneck for things like SSDs. Um, there are other devices. I think we have a key E on that board, but I would have to check uh, for things like Wi-Fi. Um, that's definitely still something you can do on SATA and still get very good performance. Um, so I do believe we do support that. Um, but as far as supporting more legacy style of SSDs and the M.2s, this is really not something that we're that focused on anymore. Uh, and we see most things trending out of that. Um, so I don't think you'll see much more of that in the future either. Um, moving on to the next one here from Ryan Moz Mozamin. Uh, he asks, thanks for doing these videos. My first computer build ever, I just completed a few months ago. It's about 80% EVGA, 
uh, Z390 FTW, RTX 2080 Ti FTW3, 1000 watt T2 Supernova, and a new audio card. That's very good components that you have there. Uh, I haven't had a better experience uh, than with EVGA, your products and your customer service team. Great. I love to hear that. Uh, he says, I love your how-to videos, and I was wondering if there was going to be a new how-to overclock for video for beginners, uh, either within the BIOS for the CPU or within Precision X1 for GPUs. Uh, I don't mean anything too crazy, just a conservative overclock to learn the ropes. Thanks again. Um, well, yes, it's, it's good that you asked that because actually last week I did film an uh, updated video. I did have an overclocked GPU video uh, with XOC, um, but now that Precision X1 is really nice and stable, I went back and I recorded a new one using our Kingpin card and uh, running it through superposition to see how far we could actually get the clocks to go. Um, it's taken me a little bit longer to edit that video just because uh, there's many runs of an overclock that you have to go through before you kind of finally find where it's kind of stable. Um, so I am editing that now, and hopefully within a couple days of this going up, uh, that should be going up as well. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to have a, a pretty beginner's uh, overclocking video coming here very shortly. Uh, next one here is Tech with Sean. He says, why did I just buy a 2080 Ti if you're going to be putting out a faster one in less, uh, less than a year later? Um, well, I don't know of any plans at this point to um, kind of supersede the 2080 Ti card. Um, that is the fastest card right now. Um, but in my opinion, it's always kind of a year away as far as you know GPU technology and the advancement of it. Even if you go all the way back to 3D effects Voodoo cards in the late 90s until now, there's always been about, say, a one to two year span before the next great thing comes out, whether that be on our side or the competitor's side. Um, so uh, I think that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, you know, I still run a 1080 Ti in my own system. Uh, I haven't upgraded yet because quite frankly, I'm really happy with the performance that I currently have. Um, once we see a lot more uh, ray tracing uptake, which we actually should see here pretty soon, um, there are definitely more developers. It's taken time for them to kind of get everything moving. Um, then that's when I myself will transition to the new stuff. Um, but there's always, it's always in flux. There will always be that next thing uh, on the horizon. So, you know, I think when it makes sense for you, when you like the performance, that's when you should buy into it. And clearly, if you just bought a 2080 Ti, something about that you found pretty compelling because you went out and bought one. Um, certainly don't be, you know, worried about your purchase or thinking that you made a decision because something's going to replace it. Um, that's always the case with computers. Um, but what you have is the best right now. Um, moving on. The next one is from Paris uh, Bert Sekas. I think I said that wrong. Uh, well, I'm considering to buy an EVGA 600BR power supply. Uh, could you please tell me the capacitor's life range? Uh, I'll be using it about two to three hours a day. Hmm, that's a tough one because every individual capacitor inside of power supply should last a good 10 years. Um, but there's always the possibility that one fails prematurely and then that in turn could make the whole unit fail. Um, but I think a pretty good seven to eight year uh, with 10 year being a distinct possibility as well is um, pretty easy to say. Uh, a lot of it has to do with how hot the components are getting and how hot those capacitors are getting. Um, if they get really, really hot, then they will fail faster. Um, so it's good to periodically dust out your system. Uh, install in a system that has a um, dust filter if at all possible would definitely help the life of that continue uh, and and you should be able to get that seven to eight years or even ten years out of a unit like that without any issues especially when you're using it two to three hours a day if you're using it two to three hours a day you may actually get far beyond that because uh, that's not a con that's not really a long amount of time to be running a computer daily um, a lot of people uh, will kind of leave their computers running 24-7 uh, which I've never personally recommended for a few reasons one it uses more power two it is harder on the power supply uh, uh, so it will fail faster and three it can fail much faster because if there's ever any surge your system is always running therefore any surge is going to hit that power supply while it's on um, so my recommendation is if you're not using it turn it off and if you're only using it a couple hours a day it should last a very long time uh, and finally coming back around to the a little fun that we had with Gamers Nexus in the last video. Uh, they are now announcing that uh, GN bath mats are coming to a store near you. Uh, so I think that's a victory for us, getting the PC Master Race into every aspect of a gamer's life. 
Um, realistically, uh, shout out to Gamers Nexus and to Steve's team. Uh, I really respect the work that they do. Um, we work with them. Uh, we've provided products to them before in the past, but we always do so with the knowledge that uh, they will always give their honest opinion of our products and they can cut through the bull uh, to give us what they really think. And that is something that can be commended quite highly. So uh, that's it for this week of Ask EVGA. As ever, if you have questions about EVGA products or PC gaming, uh, put your questions in the comment section below, and I will catch that in a future episode. You have a good one.